Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Amy here. Today we are going to do a mid-month wrap-up um, because it always takes me so long to try to remember about all the books I read during one month. Um, so we're going to start cutting it in half. So without further ado, I finished the Everyday series. Uh, I read Another Day and Someday. Every day being the first book. Um, Another Day is actually pretty much the same book as Every Day. It's just told from Rhiannon's point of view. Uh, Rhiannon is the girl that A from Every Day uh, falls in love with. And of course you'll, um, you'll get A in this book because, you know, they are part of the story. A has has a different body every day. They are someone new every day. They kind of like take over the life of someone for just that one day. And then the next day, they are someone else. So really we're just kind of redoing every day in this book, but we get it from Rhiannon's point of view. I like um, a story told from another character's point of view, hence um, Midnight Sun. So I thought this was fun, although I didn't enjoy it as much I enjoyed every day. Uh, Rhiannon started to kind of get on my nerves <laughs> a little bit. I ended up giving it a three star uh, just because I wasn't as into it as every day. I thought every day was a little bit more interesting as we got to know A and the person that A was and um, how she how they go, how A goes about their everyday life. And real, and then just as, this is just Rhiannon telling us about her feelings about A. And in the beginning, it was hard to love A, not necessarily love A, but if A's not in a body that Rhiannon is particularly fond of, she may not feel as strong as feelings towards A as versus A would be in a body of Rihanna's choice. Does that make sense? So again, there's a lesson in here to learn. Love is love. It's not all about what's on the outside. You have to look on the inside of that person as well. If you love that person, it, it doesn't matter who they are that day they are still that person on the inside. So I think that's kind of the lesson we're supposed to be learning throughout this little series. Uh, and then I picked up Someday, once again, not as great as every day. Uh, someday we get a lot of point of views. We get the point of views from A, we get a point of view from Rhiannon, um, and then we also follow other people like A. So there are others out there in the world. Some of them don't handle their their everyday life as well as A does. Some of them are just like A and they just try to do the best for that person on on that day as they as they can and hopefully not ruin anything for that person. Uh, so yeah, so we get a lot more in this book. Um, Although I wasn't super impressed on how it ended. Of course, we have our bad character who is a body, I'm gonna call him a body jumper. I don't really don't, they don't really give him a name. Um, but this body jumper was, we were introduced to this body jumper in every day. He considers himself a he, although he does end up in uh, a female body. Um, he still considers himself a he. His name is Z, and he's not a very good person at all. And he's trying to convince A to look at things the way he looks at them. So, an, uh, once again, kind of a lesson, lesson to be learned kind of story, but I just wasn't as into it. I wasn't as into it. I didn't really care for the way it ended. Uh, I enjoyed it, gave it three stars again, but it just wasn't, um, it wasn't what I wanted out, out of the series, I guess. I, I don't know <laughs> what I wanted, um, but what I got wasn't it. <laughs> 
We also get to hear from Nathan. Nathan is from the first book as well. Nathan is a fun character. I really did enjoy his point of view. Nathan is a body that A was in for a day and Nathan sort of remembers more, not really remembers, but he knows something wasn't right that day. And because he was, he was kind of, it was kind of a different situation for him. A made a mistake when they were in Nathan's body. Uh, so we get to hear a lot more from him. All in all, it was a fun series. I didn't go get the other book, but the other book is Every Day. Uh, Every Day, I think, I think if you're gonna read this, Every Day is really the only book you need to read. Uh, I just really enjoyed the story. I was just fascinated by A, and I just thought it was a, a great uh, lesson for young adults out there who don't really identify themselves. Uh, so, so yeah. But all in all, it was fun. Next, I read Roommates by Serena Bowen. I really liked this book. Gave it five stars, of course. This is Male Male Romance. This is also the beginning of some sort of series that's happening, but it's written by different authors. Every book is a different author. Uh, it's called... Um, Vino's, hold on, let me, let me find out that, what it's called. Vino's and, Vino and Veritas series, uh, written by different authors. Um, this one doesn't have anything to do with the, with the, the bar that we're going to get to know in the series, but it sort of introduces the bar, because the guys do end up going to this bar. Um, so it's, it sort of opens up this this um, series of books, mostly male male romance, and I think there's uh, also some female female in there as well. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. But Roommates is um, Roderick and Kieran's story. They sort of know each other from high school, but not really. Never officially met, um, but there is a little bit of series of events that happens and uh, Kieran, Kieran knows who Roderick is and Roderick, although doesn't really know who Kieran is, Kieran has repeatedly made himself known in these situations so Roderick, Roderick is familiar with him. That's high school. Anyway, so jump forward um, to about, what, 10 years I think and um, we, they meet again. Roderick has just had a bad breakup with his boyfriend, so he comes home. He doesn't have a great relationship with his parents. His his father mainly does not accept him, uh, and his mother kind of goes with the flow, basically. He comes home anyway, uh, just because he really doesn't have anywhere to go. He's hoping to find a place here for at least a little while to get his feet off the ground. He doesn't have much. Uh, he gets a job at this... Um, coffee a local little coffee shop locally owned coffee shop Roderick is a baker he went to like culinary school so he made something of himself but um, he lived with his boyfriend and his boyfriend kind of cut him off so anyway he's trying to uh, build himself back up and back in his hometown and lo and behold uh, Kieran works in this same coffee shop uh, so in the beginning, it's a little bit of a, a rough patch between the two uh, because, of course, Kieran knows who Roderick is. And it takes Kieran, it takes Roderick a little bit, but he remembers. But he's not going to bring it up. He just wants to work, work pleasantly with the guy, um, be friends with him. So it's a little rough start in the beginning. Kieran is a very complex character. He has never been with another guy, even though he knows he's he's probably gay uh, he's been with women but it hasn't you know hasn't been hasn't been what he wanted he's never come out to anybody his parents or, or anything um, but Kieran also has uh, a secret he's holding not necessarily a secret that you think uh, so that was a little surprising to me a, a, a nice little twist in the story uh, so that was fun but getting to know these two guys more throughout the book I, I fell in love with Roderick I think he's fantastic and I love how they cook together you know Ro Roderick's always coming up with these great recipes and they sound delicious and I loved that <laughs> in this book but I love these two guys I love the slow build with them uh, very sexy 
highly recommend this series going into it. Um, well, I say that. I recommend this book. Hopefully the rest of the series will be just as good. I'm sure it will be. Uh, it's all good authors. I'll of course have roommates linked down below. So all you gotta do is click on roommates and uh, it'll take you to the Goodreads page and you can see at the bottom um, all the other books. I think it's like on the bottom right hand uh, all the other books that will be or that are in the series. Uh, so if you wanna check that out, I'll have that down below. Okay, next up I tried picking up uh, Conviction by Denise Minna. This was a Reese's Book Club pick of the month. Shoot, I don't I don't know when. It might have been two years ago. It's been sitting on my TBR and I finally decided to pick it up because I was sort of obsessed with the idea of a podcast and a book because I loved The Night Swim. Also loved another book that we'll get to in a second with a podcast. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna pick this one up. And not so much. The podcast in this book is very boring. It doesn't really, <laughs> it doesn't really, um, it didn't really do anything for me. And the characters didn't really do anything for me. I got about, I guess maybe halfway through and I kind of gave up cause I just, what I didn't care anymore. I wasn't interested in who we were following um, and, and just the story. I just wasn't into it at all. Uh, so unfortunately I did DNF this one. It just wasn't for me. That doesn't mean it's not for anyone else out there. Basically we're, we're following a, a, a woman. Um, her husband leaves her in the beginning of the book for like her best friend. And so she jumps right into this podcast to kind of get her mind off of things. Um, but then realizes that she knows someone that the podcast is talking about. And she basically doesn't believe that he committed the crime the podcast is talking about. So she takes it upon herself to, I guess, clear him. Her best friend who was cheating, who was sleeping with her husband, uh, her best friend's husband, they kind of become friends, I guess, but it was it was a little unclear to me if they were friends or not because she was such a bitch to him. But they kind of go on this little adventure together to clear this guy that she, this person that she knows from this podcast's name. But I, I, I completely lost interest in it and I just didn't like her character at all. Next up, I jumped right back into a male male romance because if if I'm in a slump, male male romance is where I, I go to get happy. So I jumped into Trust with the Chaser. I really enjoyed this story, of course. Uh, this is Mason and Nash's story. Um, Mason Hanks and Nash Flint. They sort of knew each other back in the day. Nash is a little bit older than Mason, uh, but Mason's always sort of had like this kind of little crush on Nash. Nash is semi in the closet. His his mother knows that he is gay, but she keeps telling him that he needs to keep quiet in order to have a better life. I don't like Nash's mother. Mason re returns home and he opens up a LGBTQ friendly uh, bar and grill in the area and Nash takes it upon himself to check out new things in the area so he goes and have lunch one day. He continues to have lunch there almost every day. Uh, of course there's a little bit of drama mixed into the story of Nash and uh, Mason thanks to Mason's brother and his family. Uh, there's a little bit of drama with Nash as well. I think what didn't do it for me for this story, this is also a series by the way, um, it's the Rainbow Cove series. Um, but what really didn't do it for me was the audio. I listened to this on audio because it was just, I was scanning through my library audiobooks and I happened upon this. And this book has kind of been on my TBR wish list for a while, so I went ahead and I borrowed it, but I really did not like the narrator. Uh, he was very like bland. Uh, he didn't really, I didn't, I didn't feel any emotion, any, any emotion from these guys when they were together. So it just kind of fell short for me right there, but I really enjoyed the story, but um, I advise not to listen to it if you're going to 
um, jump into this series. I don't know if I'm, I'll continue with the series. If I do, I'll definitely be reading it with my eyeballs. As I'm still into uh, wanting to listen to a good podcast, I jumped into Sadie by Co Courtney Summers. Oh my gosh, the hype is real, y'all. I'm probably late to the party, but if you have not read this, I advise you to do it now and get the audio. If you can get your hands on the audio, it is so well worth it. Even if you have to give up a credit, I'd give up the credit. But it is available on, it was available through my library on Hoopla. So check your library for that. Uh, I highly, highly advise the audio. It was fantastic. Fantastic. Right up there with the Night Swim. Uh, we got a, a great cast of characters. Uh, everyone had a voice. Uh, it, it reminded me of, it's one, like one of my favorite podcasters. Um, I don't think he's put anything out there recently, um, but he had, I think he had a little series or something on Oxygen. Payne Lindsay. What is the name of his podcast? Up and Vanished with Payne Lindsay. It really reminded me. Um, this book reminded me of that podcast. We're following Wes McCory, um, who is the podcaster, and he started this podcast called The Girls, where he is going to dive into missing girl cases. So we're following him as well as we're following Sadie. Um, Sadie's sister, Maddie, was murdered, and Sadie thinks she knows who done it. Has, her mother has drifted away again. Uh, she doesn't know where she's at. Uh, she doesn't really have anyone. The, the landlady that they rent their place from, um, she sort of kind of takes care of Sadie, or, and she took care of Sadie and Maddie when they were young. Um, so she kind of is like a motherly figure to Sadie, um, but Sadie just feels like she has nothing to, to lose. So she takes it upon herself to venture out to see if she can find Maddie's killer and so that's 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 where we go we go we follow Sadie and then we follow West with his podcast I think the events take place a year or so apart I don't remember how long apart it is um, but it's definitely oh I think it's over a year apart from where we're following Sadie and then we're following uh, West in his podcast the way this ended I like I want more I'm I, I wish there would be more to this story, but I, I know that that's how it's just got to end. But uh, I, I want it more from this. But um, otherwise, I I loved it. Five stars. Um, the When we follow Wes, it's just like we're listening to a podcast. Like the people on the phone, recordings, it's the best. Um, you know, he's like following people around, going to find people, uh, kind of tracing Sadie's footsteps throughout the story or throughout his podcast and it's it's fantastic. <laughs> I loved the audio. Highly recommend the audio if you have not read this book yet or even if you want to do a reread and you haven't listened to it, I recommend you listen to it. If you can get your hands on that audio, do it. And I decided to pick up uh, The Secret She Keeps. This is by Michael Robathon. Ro Ro Robathon? like that. I uh, gave it four stars. Loved it. Um, I did listen to this on audio. My only problem with this story was that I did feel like it sort of dragged a little bit. Um, I didn't necessarily get bored with the story. I was very much engrossed with what was going on, um, but I just felt like it was just like taking too long to get to the point. We follow Agatha and um, Megan. Uh, they, they are both pregnant. Uh, Agatha works in like the local grocery store and she is sort of like a little obsessed with Megan. Megan seems to have the perfect life. Um, the, she already has two kids, a boy and a girl, um, the perfect husband, um, the perfect house. You know, it just seems like perfect all around. But you know, as always, what's on the outside isn't always what's on the inside. Uh, Megan and her husband, of course, have problems. Um, this baby that she's pregnant for now was not in the plans. So that's sort of putting um, a little bit of pressure on their marriage. 
And then Agatha is just a very interesting character within herself. Um, she's obsessed with Megan, so she kind of follow, follows Megan around. Both Megan and Agatha ha both have uh, secrets. One has a little bit more intense secrets than the other, um, but very engrossing story. Kept me on my toes, especially at the end. Didn't know what was going to happen. Um, it does involve baby kidnapping, like right from the hospital. So if that's a trigger warning for you, maybe don't read this book. Um, cause that was a little, that was, a, that put a little pressure on me and I'm, I'm not a mother. Um, but I can't imagine someone stealing my baby. Um, so, so there's that just wanted to throw that out there. I don't know if that's a spoiler or not, but it's in there. It was very intense for me towards the end. Uh, and I, like I said, it, it drug a little bit for me, but I, I was really loving the story and couldn't wait to find out what, what the heck was going on with these characters. <laughs> then I picked up Stud by K.M. Newhold. Finally, another Four Bears construction story. This is book number five. This is West and Sawyer's story. Um, this one, it, it wasn't my favorite, uh, but I still, I still loved it. Gave it four stars. Um, what I didn't like about this book has to do with Sawyer. So Sawyer is twice the age of Wes. Wes is in his 20s. Sawyer is 40. Not quite 20 years, but close to 20 years different. Um, so Sawyer just has like this he has like this chip on his shoulder about young younger men. Um, his ex-boyfriend left him for a younger man and then in walks Wes uh, flirting with him and asking him out on dates and he just doesn't he just doesn't trust it. He doesn't trust not that it, not that he doesn't trust Wes. He doesn't trust himself to get involved in a relationship with a much younger man only to experience heartbreak all over again. Uh, Sawyer is the owner of Woolies. We're introduced to Sawyer uh, in the first book right away with Woolies. He actually inherited the bar somewhere along in the series. It it was it belonged to Woolie himself, um, but Woolie has passed away and left the bar to Sawyer. Woolie has always been like a father figure to Sawyer, so we get um, that part of the story, which I really enjoyed that. I liked hearing about Woolie in the background of um, his life and, um, you know, had the bar and, um, you know, Sawyer had a lot to do with that. And then Wes, Wes is Dare's nephew. Is it Dare? Yeah, Dare is in the... Darren Stone, their book two. Is it nailed? I could be wrong. But anyway, we meet West earlier on in book two, I want to say. Um, and Stone takes him on as an apprentice. So, of course, years later, uh, Wes is a little bit more matured. He knows what he wants. He knows he wants to get his license in construction. Uh, he's kind of been going out on his own with construction jobs uh, through the Four Bears construction. Uh, so he's he's very mature for his age. Uh, you can see that in the writing in his character in the book. Sawyer basically turns him, turns him down every time Wes tries to ask him out on a date. And finally, Wes is just like, okay, well, I, I need to get out there, I guess. I'm, I'm ready to settle down. I need to find someone that wants to settle down with me. So, you know, he puts himself out there on the apps and stuff. Well, what I didn't like was even though Sawyer didn't want him or claimed not to want him, he didn't want anyone else to have him. So he was sabotaging all of Wes's dates. And it was starting to piss me off a little a little bit and making me not like Sawyer's character. And I didn't want to do that. I, I really do like Sawyer as a character and a person. And I just feel like he needed love and he needed to trust himself and trust his heart. And he was sabotaging Wes who was like his best friend and you know he loved Wes. So that was really my only problem with this story, but I still love the story. It was still fun um, learning about these two characters, learning more about Wooly um, and the bar and I really enjoyed their story in the end, uh, Wes and Sawyer's story. And of course we get all the guys 
in in the book as well so you can read these books as standalones if if you you know if you don't want to get into the whole series you want to pick and choose but i recommend all of them they are fantastic and and you get to know all these guys and they're so fun and so funny i feel like you just get the stories better when you know all the characters oh and there's baby goslings in this book so cute so cute and lastly, I recently just finished The Minders by John Mars. I got a little uh, happy in the beginning and I rated this four stars on my Goodreads. But then after sitting on it a couple days, I had to kind of sit on it for a little while because I kept going back and forth in my mind. I decided it was more of like a three and a half star. I, I did put it as three stars on Goodreads because they don't do half stars. I didn't quite feel it deserved the four star, so I gave it the three star, but really I think it's like a three and a half star. Uh, I, I did enjoy the story. Like, I didn't want to put it down. Uh, I wanted to, I did listen to this via audio because it was done by a cast of characters, and I love an audiobook with a cast of characters, especially if we have some good narrators, which we really did. Uh, and it, and it, it brings the story to life and it just livens it up a bit to me. I love an audiobook. I know there's people out there that say that, oh, you're not reading if you're listening. I don't believe that. You're still reading. Um, I go back and forth a lot. I'll read along a lot as I listen. But to me, I don't have a lot of time to sit down and read. So an audiobook is sort of my saving grace in that kind of way. And then sometimes if the narrators, most of the time the narrators are great and you get that liveliness of, of the book and the characters and I don't know, it just, I, I love a good audiobook. I will definitely tell you if the audio is bad, um, but for the most part, I love, I love them. Uh, anyway, uh, so The Minders, John Mars. I'm not big on political or governmental stories, um, but this one was a little step above that. Uh, so we have... So we're in like the 21st century and computers and files are, can easily get hacked into. So what the government decides to do is find people to put like the most classified information in their minds. Cause you can't, you can't break into a person, right? I think you probably can, but that's what they do in this book. So they put out like this puzzle out into the world and whoever can finish it in like this amount of time, they bring in for more, more testing and then they choose five people from there to have all this information put into them and give them the opportunity to like start their lives over. Hence the minders. So we have these five people, all of them uh, don't have the best life don't have you know a lot to live for except for maybe one one of our characters uh for sure uh which is which was very interesting um it's a very interesting setup uh for this character i i don't want to say too much but anyway we follow these five minders throughout the story as they're kind of making a new life for themselves then we have someone coming in and trying to kill off these people there is um a nice twist towards the end a very you know, John Mars kind of twist towards the end that I, I really enjoyed. But overall, it wasn't, it wasn't like my favorite John Mars. You do, in my opinion, if you're going to jump into the minders, you do need to read the one as well as the passengers because it's, it spoils those books for sure throughout this whole book. This, this book is almost based off of those two books. So you really do need to read um, the one and the passengers if you if you want to get a good feel for this book You can probably jump into this book without reading those other books, but it references back to those books a lot in this book um, So just to get a better feel of what you're reading here. Uh, I recommend the one and the passengers um, And if, if you want to get through them quickly I recommend the audios for for all of these because they are fantastic. I listened to the one, uh, the passengers and the minders, and I loved all the audios. And they each, they all have cast of characters. So right, right up there for me. But yeah, this, this was okay, but yeah, definitely not, not my favorite John Morris. All right, y'all, that is it. Uh, that's 
the books I read halfway through April. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts about them were. But thank y'all so much for watching as always. Hope y'all are all staying safe and doing well out there. Hugs from me all around and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all.